Will you please welcome co-founder of AWE, Ori Inbar. Good morning, Munich. And thank you all for joining AWE Europe 2017. I am in awe. Are you guys feeling awesome yet? Are you? That's it? Come on, let's hear it. It's great to be hosting AWE for the eighth year. Thank you, it's been a great year for AR and VR. This is how it started, AWE, back in 2010. You can see how far back the inspiration goes for our superheroes. It's kind of hard to believe it was such a long time ago. So I want to ask you guys, is there anyone in the audience today that has been with us in our very first event? Anyone? I'm sure you're here. There must be someone. Maybe they're in the exhibit area. Anyway, for those who have been with us since then, I want to officially welcome you to the AWE Eight Timers Club. Congratulations. Now, a year before that first AWE, I went on stage in Graz University, not far from here, and I made this insane prediction. It was my first AR presentation ever, but I had a vision. I said, in 10 years, everyone will use AR to experience reality in a more meaningful way. In 10 years, that started in 2009, so it's, I guess, 2019, a year depicted in sci-fi movies such as Blade Runner, the original, Akira, Heat Seeker, not so great, The Road, pretty good one, and of course, Dopo la Caduta di New York. All dystopian futures, which can only be avoided if everyone uses AR to experience reality in a more meaningful way. That was the vision back then. And the mission became to nurture a new industry and accelerate it through collaboration. And that's how augmentedreality.org was born as a nonprofit trade organization to help advance AR and later VR. Our moonshot became to inspire 1 billion AR users by 2010, by the end of the decade. And that's how AWE came to life and grew exponentially to nearly 10,000 attendees across three continents around the world this year. And then in 2015, Super Ventures was born as the first AR fund dedicated for AR, and that encouraged many startups and investors to jump in. So I think you'll agree the mission is well on its way. But when will it actually happen? When will everyone use AR to experience reality in a more meaningful way? To, I think that to achieve, you, with your support, we're going to achieve this moonshot very soon. After all, you guys here in the room are the Avengers. And DigiCapital recently published that mobile AR will top 1 billion users by 2021. And the big players are all battling for dominance. But what's in interesting and some, something that sometimes the press tends to ignore is the upstarts. They will define this new wave. Take, for example, ARKit. Its foundation was actually originally developed by two startups, one of them born and raised right here in Munich. A big shout out to Metail. Now check this out. Here are 350 AR startups that are innovating on every single layer of the stack that we published in an AR landscape 
just in February this year. And this list, list is probably doubled by now. And if you look at VR, there's even more companies on the VR funds, VR landscape. The, the new ecosystem is really thriving. So I think if people are asking when, the answer is it's happening right now. And this week, for two days, we're all in awe in Munich to meet 1,500 like-minded professionals. So who's really here? Who are the people sitting next to you? The three key groups that we have assembled together are the startups, corporations, and investors, the triangle that drives the, the, the economy of the industry. But then the designers, the producers, the engineers, the developers, they are actually the people that move the fuel, that move this industry forward. And we've also brought together nearly 100 journalists this week to help amplify the amazing progress of this industry. Most of the people you'll find here are startups. Any startups in the house? Make some noise. That's what I'm talking about. How about women? Do we have women in the audience today? All right. Women are strong in awe. And Fortune 1000 companies that came here to find AR and VR solutions is the fastest growing group at AWE. And I think by the end of this year, every single company will need to have an AR and VR strategy. And it's a very diverse audience coming from 51 countries from all over the world to come here to collaborate and make magic happen. So what kind of roles will you meet here? A big part of you are C-level and executives, the top decision makers, along with a great mix of technical, creative, and management roles. That mix was our guiding principle in crafting the program for you this year. You see, one, a track for each audience. Inspire will be here, and the other tracks will be in the breakout rooms in that direction. Special thanks to Reflect, an area which helped put together the work track, which is the most popular this year. So now we know who's here. So reach out to the person next to you and say hi. But what's really our purpose here? Why are we all here? We know the next computing wave is here, and it will be bigger than anything we have seen before, because it's much more natural than anything we've had before. And it makes us humans better at anything we do. It gives us superpowers. Yes, we've been obsessed with this theme for quite some time now, but it's true. If you think about it, AR and VR, with AR and VR you can master skills instantly. You, ha you can have super fast technicians that have limitless knowledge right in their field of view. You can manipulate things like designers that use telekinesis or have body powers like athletes that can continuously improve their performance, and mind powers like retailers that can read their customers' minds, and even superhuman abilities like nurses with x-ray vision. And this year, more and more people are getting the taste of these superpowers, and they want more. But some are raising concerns about the risks involved with this technology. Ray Kurzweil has an iconic quote about this. He says, every technology since fire has intertwined promise and peril. So I ask you, what do you choose? Seriously, what do you choose? Thank you.
you, the Avengers, I'm sure you're going to choose Promise. So let's use these superpowers to change the world. Seriously, the world is currently facing some big growing pains. Overpopulation, globalization challenges, inequality, lack of empathy, and of course, dopo la caduta di New York. But we can fight these dystopian futures. As uh, Amy Webb says in her book, The Signals Are Talking, there isn't one predetermined future. There are many possible futures. And it's up to every single one of you to create the future that we want to live in. AR and VR give us the tools to create that future. It can help democratize access to knowledge. Anyone, anywhere can have access to the world's best information resources and experts right in their field of view. And with the AI and VR can help drive economic growth by improving human productivity and efficiency and help upskill workers whose jobs have been commoditized by automation. With AR and VR, healthcare experts using intelligent computer vision can treat patients in remote areas around the world and lift health levels. And with AR and VR, um, people can collaborate to solve problems as if they were in the same room. And because it can communicate emotions, it can increase empathy around the world. And finally, thanks to AR's and VR's ability to simulate things, we don't have to build so much stuff anymore in reality. We can improve energy consumption and promote sustainability. And here at AWE this week, we have some great beginning of these examples. And by the way, sustainability is not about protecting the environment. Earth is fine and it will be here long after humans are gone. It's really about protecting our future. Neil Harbison, you know, the first cyborg, born colorblind and implanted an antenna in the back of his head so he can hear colors, says, we should design ourselves instead of designing the environment. What's humanity's number one skill? What helped this guy survive for so long? What sets us apart from all living things? I think it's our incredible ability to adapt. From the tallest mountains to the deepest oceans, from the deserts to the arctics, humans have this incredible ability to adapt to anything that is thrown at us. And now, we are taking matters into our own hands. Yuval Harari pontificates in his book, Homo Deus, that we'll have to bioengineer ourselves in order to transform to the next species. And if you think about it, it's probably inevitable. And Kurzweil predicts that by the 2030s, will connect our neocortex to the cloud. And Elon Musk, you know, Elon Musk says, yeah, we have to bioengineer ourselves or machines will make us obsolete by the time the singularity hits. So in the meantime, before we become cyborgs, we need a little more of augmented reality and virtual reality. So I'm asking the tech gods, gods of tech. I stand here before the best, tech, the best audience in the tech kingdom, and I ask you, 
give us a couple of decades with wearables, with AR and VR, allow us to gradually adapt and evolve through our natural senses by augmenting ourselves externally. Gods of tech, once again, let us enjoy AR, VR, MR, let's just call it in short, XR. Let us enjoy it until, say, 2030? Too far? How about 20, 2019? The year AI becomes smarter than humans. How does that sound? All right. It's a deal. And that summarizes the reason we're all here, so that everyone uses XR to experience reality in a more meaningful way. And with you, the Avengers, nothing can stop us in, save, in changing the world. And remember, it's about knowledge, economic growth, health, empathy, and sustainability to the people. Now, before I let you go and change the world, I want to thank our amazing sponsors who helped us make this event possible by lending their funds and their networks and really make a difference. And a special thanks to the state of Bavaria, which invited us to Munich and supported us in this event. So give it up for our sponsors. And I want to thank our 90 exhibitors that are here to share the latest and greatest in AR. What an amazing collection of companies. And what's really special is the number of Fortune 1000 companies that are here to talk about how they're adopting this technology for, to improve their own businesses. And how about our 115 awesome speakers sharing their expertise and experiences so that we can all get a head start. Give it up for our speakers. And big thanks to our event partners, who help, which help spell, uh, spread the gospel in communities all over the world. And finally, put your hands together for the team that put together this event. Give it up for the super friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Now let's go and change the world. Have a great show. Thank you.